thank you, Dr. Nabila, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, the home-based newborn care in Bangladesh, but I'll also touch briefly about the facility-based newborn care as well. Uh, so just to uh, start my presentation, uh, Bangladesh, I mean, as Dr. Nabila has already mentioned, Bangladesh is already on track uh, for achieving MDG4. Uh, our MDG target was 48, and it's been decreasing steadily, and we have evidence now uh, from recent uh, surveys and uh, country estimates that we've already achieved the MDG target uh, for under five mortality. So for, for now, the final frontier is now reducing the different inequities, uh, and that, by that I mean between income groups and also during geographic areas, and I'll show a little bit about uh, what I mean by that quickly. So if we look at the continuum of care, and we've talked a lot about it, and Dr. Shams presented it yesterday as well, uh, there is a tremendous inequity in uh, all the services around delivery care. And uh, if you look at, uh, there's one thing I want you to uh, see here, if you look at the skilled attendance at birth, which is the third uh, column, set of columns, as well as the postnatal care by uh, under two days by medically trained provider, you'll see that they're very directly correlated to one another. So that has been, uh, has an impact on uh, improving the, uh, so, so the inequity uh, in, ar around postnatal care, we also need to pay attention to inequities around skilled attendance at birth for Bangladesh. Uh, geographically, I have uh, two sets of uh, maps here. The left one is uh, postnatal care for uh, 42 days by any provider, uh, serving as a proxy for the immediate postnatal care. And the right side, you'll see the postnatal care um, by a medically trained provider uh, within 42 days. So if you look at the, uh, the two different maps, you'll see that the coverage uh, changes quite a bit when we look at medically trained provider. Uh, also, I want to mention that you know, the areas that you're seeing as green uh, the green threshold is here is 40%, so it is still a very low estimate, but there is a tremendous uh, inequities ar around the different districts, and typically the eastern part of Bangladesh is uh, underserved and uh, has lower health indicators, and the western side is doing a little bit better. And it, the causes of neonatal mortality is very, same, uh, very similar to what we've seen in other countries as well, uh, but about 60% of uh, all the neonatal mortalities uh, are related to interpartum related deaths as well as preterm complications. And they're the ones that need uh, immediate care and immediate uh, attention. So home-based postnatal care is not new in Bangladesh. Uh, since 2003, there have been research projects and uh, different programs which addressing it to varying, deg varying degrees. Uh, the, the two uh, project projects that you'll see above the timeline are the research projects, uh, Projonmo, and community-based postnatal care operations research. And we've had several programs uh, by Saving Newborn Lives, uh, uh, Safe Motherhood Project by JICA, uh, UNICEF, BRAC, uh, USAID supported Access and Mamoni, and also the HBB program supported by USAID. But uh, having all these programs, there are two things, uh, important things that happened. Uh, one in 2009, uh, which is the uh, national neonatal health strategy was approved. So before that, we didn't have a standard guideline for Bangladesh. So the different projects were using different uh, cadres of health worker and different packages of postnatal care. But that has been slowly, we are we, we're working on unifying it and making it uh, one standard package. And then the other uh, incident that happened that was very significant was we've had a, a new health sector plan, which was approved and it started from July 2011, going up to 2016. And the health sector plan already in includes a lot of the newborn care components in it. And as a policy, it's there and it is permitting us to uh, undertake programs. And now the challenge is to make sure that it's implemented at scale and uh, that it gets results. So this is, I'm going to spend a little bit of time here and it's a little, might seem a little bit complicated, but it's actually not. And uh, I adopted it from uh, some, some of the Japago framework using for preeclampsia and eclampsia. So if, it, if the left side is, when we are implementing uh, a postnatal care program on a national level, uh, so you start with an early setup and there are certain things that you need to do, and then you move towards expansion, and then you, the, in, during the mature phase of the programming, you want to uh, address some of the institutionalization issues. So in Bangladesh, if, if I uh, talk about the first one, uh, we actually uh, revise the job description of our outreach workers, uh, which are uh, family welfare assistant and health assistants uh, from the different directorates. 
and we've introduced a new uh, cadre of worker which is based in facility but closer to community. They're called community healthcare providers. And we have revised their job description to uh, support their program, uh, support postnatal care, but then we haven't uh, analyzed our, their workload and making sure that they have a realistic way of providing uh, services at, uh, at, at a high coverage. So that's one of the challenges that we still have left. And a, a critical gap uh, as we are moving towards maturity is the supervision because we have a lot, we have uh, different cadres of worker providing services, but the supervision for these workers and, uh, and both from programmatic point of view as well as technical point of view has been a challenge and there's been a significant gap and that's one of the part uh, where we are, sub uh, we are having a discussion with the government to address uh, uh, over the time. And also uh, ensuring logistics at appropriate levels because we have uh, home-based care and uh, certain providers for that. We have outreach level workers, we have uh, static facilities, and making sure that the different logistical needs uh, for uh, post care, for immediate newborn care, and uh, care for newborn infections, uh, we need to make sure that uh, it, it takes place. And, at a national level right now, there is still a significant gap. Uh, we are making progress in essential newborn care. So the five indicators uh, that are uh, listed here, uh, between 2007 and 2011, we've seen uh, encouraging um, response uh, among the different communities. And as we are scaling up our programs, we are hoping that we will, uh, in the next uh, demographic and health survey, we'll see a significant change. So I want to talk a little bit about the different program experiences. Uh, Projonmo, as I already mentioned, uh, ran from 2002 to 2009, and it showed that the community health workers can provide quality of care and achieve coverage if they have proper training and if their workload is distributed uh, properly. And similarly, we, we've heard uh, from BRAC experience yesterday, uh, which talked about the integrated maternal newborn child survival uh, project. And it showed uh, from yesterday, we, we, we've seen that night, the BRAC health workers have achieved 97% coverage, and that can be done at scale as they're working with 6.8 million population. Uh, in the UNICEF maternal newborn child survival, which just ended last year, uh, one of the lessons from that was that by dedicated uh, NGO health workers, which are maternal newborn child health promoters, you could increase coverage significantly, but then sustaining them was would be prohibitively expens expensive, and UNICEF uh, representative didn't think that it would be possible to do it on a national scale, but for underserved communities, this, this is an approach that we need to consider since they were able to achieve postnatal care coverage from 5% to 47% in a very short amount of time. In uh, Saving New More Lives Community Based Postnatal Care Operation Research, uh, one of the critical lessons for that was that it is possible for the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare workers to provide postnatal care at home, but it's very critical that they, the pregnancy identification and the birth notification happens, and unless that happens, it's very difficult to get post early postnatal care coverage at home. Uh, so one of the initiative from the uh, uh, Director of Family Planning at the Ministry of Health right now is to collect all the phone numbers of the pregnant women and also sharing those numbers at union level facilities so that the providers can call around the time of the EDD and also get, uh, get updates on the status of pregnancy and labor. Uh, Mamoni, which is the project that I work for, uh, supported by USAID, uh, we've seen that the postnatal care coverage is heavily correlated with skilled attendance at birth, and that doesn't matter if it's at facility or community, but we are seeing a very direct correlation. So one of our effort has been to focus on skilled attendance at birth, and I'll talk a little bit about it later. And the Helping Babies Breathe initiative in Bangladesh, uh, it's rapidly scaling up uh, the neonatal resuscitation sk skills and training programs. Uh, so it has shown that it is with proper planning, with training, uh, logistics, and MNE system, if you have those things working, and if the funding and political will is there, then it is e very easy to scale up programs, because these are very low-cost interventions, but it does require planning and additional re resource investment. So uh, we, in Bangladesh, we have now uh, two, two approaches, one short-term approach and one long-term approach, and there are three pathways that we're seeing uh, to achieve high postnatal care coverage. And this is a lot of the national level discussions are around those themes. One is that we need to bring the services closer to community. And a recent initiative of the government of Bangladesh has been to establish 13,500 uh, community clinics with new cadres, uh, community healthcare providers. And they have been deployed and they're working. And it is an opportunity to bring postnatal care closer to home. And we are seeing that, you know, Slowly, it, as it is being rolled out and we are uh, training some of the community healthcare providers, we are seeing encouraging results. And uh, as a short-term measure, uh, that's a 
that's something that we can rely on. The second part is that we already have complementary NGO and development partner programs in underserved districts. Uh, out of the 64 districts of Bangladesh, about 22 are covered by large district level programs by UNICEF, Japan government, uh, USAID supported programs, uh, Save the Children and others. And those large scale MNCH programs are, in, uh, are actually making an impact in the short run. And there has been investment by development partners to train Ministry of Health and Family Welfare staff on new skills uh, such as helping babies breathe, essential newborn care, community IMCI, and, and uh, emergency triage assessment and treatment for sick newborns. And we are also uh, planning to introduce kangaroo mother care in uh, facility-based uh, providers as well as, and we are also considering it for community-based uh, ministry providers. And as a long-term approach, I mentioned it from our program experience, that there has been a focus on skilled attendance and birth and increasing on that. And there, have, uh, there are different initiatives for that. There are deployment of midwives at different levels at government clinics. Uh, this training program has started in 2010. So around 2013 and 2014, we will see a gradual rollout of midwives. And uh, I, th I think that will have a significant impact on the long term. Uh, we are also task shifting. Uh, we have committee skill birth attendance. And there was a discussion yesterday uh, in the BRAC presentation. Uh, this is a six month uh, training program uh, for government outreach workers, uh, FWAs and female health assistants. And it has been rolling out, and we have now 7,500 uh, community skill birth attendants who have received, uh, over time, about 18 months of training. And this, uh, these community uh, skill birth attendants are now being encouraged to provide postnatal care, and it's working very well. And we're also converting nurses to nurse midwives, as well as we are, uh, for underserved areas, we're generating private CSBAs. Uh, one of the experiences I want to talk about private CSBAs is that uh, in Mamoni project, we've seen uh, in last one year, uh, in areas where we have private CSBs, they have achieved very high postnatal care coverage, around uh, 69 to 70 percent. And we are hoping that this will sustain. And the right two columns that you see are uh, the rightmost column is actually the postnatal care uh, within three days in national level, which is 27, and in Silla Division, where we work in the eastern part, that is only 19. So we see that this is an approach for underserved areas that is working very well. Um, the, some of the challenges are the skilled human resource gap. We've talked a lot about it. And, you know, in Bangladesh, there are two uh, critical problems. One is retaining trained manpower, in, particularly in hard-to-reach areas and underserved areas, and also uh, filling vacant positions because it's dependent on Ministry of Finance and other sectoral uh, programs. And so we need multi-sector advocacy, not only with Ministry of Health, but we also with, with other ministries as well to make sure that we uh, cover these vacant positions, which has been a big uh, barrier to achieving high coverage. And also addressing geographic and in, in economic inequities and resources for training at scale for clinical services. One of the part is the supervision system strengthening for uh, because we have developed a lot of new cadres, but supervision has been a challenge and ensuring quality of care. I want to move on a little bit to my last slide. Uh, so we, we've seen that the addressing newborn care within integrated uh, services is feasible, but it requires additional investment, and that's one of the, my takeaway messages I want you to remember. And a lot of the low-cost interventions can be scaled up and may have high impact, and, but we do need local level, uh, by that I mean district and lower level planning, uh, to prioritize in, in, in interventions and allocate resources. And we, we are already working at bringing quality services closer to home. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Imtiaz. Uh, it was wonderful.